Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Chris Saul, marketing manager for StoreWise at IBM. Welcome uh, to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Uh, so IBM Edge is rocking. Uh, StoreWise brand is, has been there in the middle of all the action quite some time during this transformation. Yes, we have. So talk about how that relates to you guys and what's it like here at IBM Edge for you guys? Well, it's, it's, you know, John, it's been fantastic uh, so far this week. Uh, we're using Edge to announce uh, big improvements to our Storewise family and to our sound volume controller system. And um, you know, we're announcing new hardware uh, that uses uh, new technology from Intel, Intel's Quick Assist technology. Uh, IBM is actually the first vendor uh, to be delivering this new Intel technology. What it enables us to do is to improve the performance of our real-time compression. And when we do that, uh, we can deliver as much as five times as much data uh, on the same storage systems with the same or better performance than people were seeing on traditional storage systems. One of the themes that's clear here at IBM Edge, and certainly not so much at the other shows with IBM, but here at Edge, because you're, you're in the infrastructure side of it, is the integration of the technologies at the chip level. Mm -hmm. You're seeing, you mentioned Intel, right? So, I mean, I know Intel's working on a lot of, a bevy of products where, you know, security, stuff getting embedded into the chip level. We heard um, from Mike earlier, Mike Kuhn, about talking about some of the differentiators around the storage side, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what does that mean to you guys? Because you guys are doing compression, it's heavy duty stuff, what innovation is going on inside the hardware that allows the software developers to write better code? Well, what's happening is Intel has produced uh, a new set of chips, which they codename Coletto Creek. And what Coletto Creek does, it's a specialized chip that's dedicated uh, to compressing data. And so with the system, with the, with the new hardware that we've integrated, uh, we can deliver as much as 10 times the performance uh, for compressed workloads compared with what we were doing before. And when 10x. You, 10x. That fits the Larry Page model. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a book in the airport. 10x performance, that seems to be the magic number. Yeah, and I think you know, a number like that really gets people's attention. And when you combine the Intel hardware with IBM's real-time compression software, which uses that hardware to deliver customer value, and uh, that's really what we're all about. And that's why we're saying with the new Storewise family hardware, uh, you can be thinking about storage for half the cost. Uh, of what you might have been looking at traditionally. I've always loved the StoreWise brand. Dave and I we have been talking about ever since the acquisition, the little tuck under deal. Love the name. But give me an example of that 10X, because that that's that's, does get your attention. That is a, that's moonshot <laughs> level kind of benchmark. Uh, what use cases are you guys tackling with that kind of uh, power? Well, really, you know, what it's all about is pretty much any workload. Um, we have a customer who is speaking with us here at Edge, Pelophone, who is uh, one of the largest uh, mobile providers in Israel. They were talking about their experience using real-time compression, using our sound volume controller technology, using our XIV storage. And when they turned on compression, they were able to get 10 times as much data in the same storage systems that they were using previously. Uh, and they got better performance out of the system as well. And, and funnily enough, the technicians were talking on the video about how you know, tricky it was to explain that uh, to their management, who you know, were like, how does this magic happen? How can you get you know, that big of a, uh, an improvement uh, and you get better performance as well? So you know, that's what's happening in the real world. So Chris, I got a question for you. Big companies, large storage companies, um, why can't they build from the ground up organically? Why can't they innovate, build products that can ship tens and thousands of thousands of, of systems? Why can't they do that? Uh, why can't? <laughs> they can, actually, is what oh, well, the point is, right? <laughs> so there's a meme out there in the business that large companies can't innovate. Oh, right, I see right? what you mean, yeah. And so, I mean, look at it. You know, EMC's criticized by that, uh, about that. Certainly HP had to go out and mm -hmm. buy 3PAR. You know, Oracle was never really in the hardware business, right. but you know, it's, you know it's, it, it bought Sun. Um, so, SVC mm -hmm. is an organic innovation. Right. Why is it that, of course I was joking before, why is it that IBM 
was able to do that. How did that come about? It was it a, was it a Skunk Works in in England? Um, <laughs> was it a gleam in somebody's eye? <laughs> did, 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 was it a you know, R and D project that somebody tried to kill ten times but finally hit the light of day? You were there in the early days. I was, so, and and actually you put your finger on it right there at the end. That the way Sand Volume Controller and then more recently Storewise uh, really happened. It started as a research project, and so a big part of the reason why IBM can be successful is the enormous investment that we make in research. And so back in 1999, uh, we had a team of people in Almaden uh, who developed the idea for what became, in 2003, Sand Volume Controller. And then we have been delivering improvements to Sand Volume Controller, new hardware platforms, and then more recently, the Storewise family built on the same technology since then. And I think, you know, you were talking about innovation in large companies. And one of the things that we've aimed to do and we've consistently done is to look around IBM and look for technologies that other teams might have been developing and see how we can include them into the system. Uh, so, for example, uh, we stole the user interface from XIV, uh, which most people acknowledge you know, is the best interface in the industry. And that's now part of the interface for Sand Volume Controller and for Storewise family. Uh, we took the easy tier technology that started in DS8000, we built that into the system as well. And then more recently, we've actually started looking outside IBM. Uh, and so we integrated uh, technology from Bridgeworks called Sandslide that optimizes the use of network technology for remote replication to reduce cost. So it's this attitude of saying we'll look for the best technology we can, you know, whether it's within IBM or whether it's coming from outside IBM, and integrate that into the system. I mean, IBM's had a sort of a very interesting history in storage, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, sort of ebb and flow and, and, and sort of big investments and, 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 and pull back on those investments and then started to make those investments again. Um, and you're now starting to, I think, see the results. You can't just turn on and turn off and then turn back on. And, right. and, and that's kind of what IBM did in storage, but, and, but the sustained investment is now, you're seeing it. Yet, SVC was born in that climate of you know, uncertainty. Um, and it's and it succeeded wildly. What, what, are the, what are the numbers now? I mean, you, you guys always talk about more than 10,000, and I think that's probably still the number, but what about the, 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 the V7000, or the store-wise family? So as you say, we've sold more than 10,000 uh, sound volume controller systems. And but it must I, be way more. I, I, it it is way more. It's one of those <laughs> things that's kind of tricky to count, so we, <laughs> so we, we don't counting. count it too often. <laughs> um, big, yeah. With our store-wise family, we've sold more than 55,000 systems. We've sold uh, more than 130,000 uh, enclosures, so the drawers that the system's made up of. And we have more than uh, 1.4 exabytes of capacity under management with that system. And you know, if you look across our entire worldwide installed base, so all of those systems across the world, uh, we're delivering better than five nines availability with those systems. So we're delivering a lot of capacity, a lot of performance, but doing it in a very reliable way as well. Yeah, now some people might say, well, you know, you, you, you went and bought store-wise and you brought in real-time compression. That, that's broken up compression. That's all true, but that is an organic, invented in IBM system, period, correct? The system is yes. invented, with, and, and you know, you, you said earlier about, you know, was it a skunk works type yeah. technology? Yes, it came from research, but for a number of years it was bordering on uh, skunk works type things. But one, I think one of our great strengths is that the key architects of the technology, the people who developed the technology back in 1999, are still leading uh, the technology development today. So we have these, if you like, guardians uh, of the architecture of the system who know, you know why we designed it the way we did and who enable us to continue to deliver it in a, in a very high quality manner and have really shepherded it through its life. So now, it's interesting because the SVC technology has become an underpinning of IBM's software-defined strategy as well as its flash strategy, which is quite interesting. Because That's right. Many flash systems, including you know TMS, when, when IBM bought it, lack a robust stack. So you said, okay, you just put it behind an SVC and voila, instant stack. That's right. So, so <laughs> talk about the importance of stack, why it's so hard to build a hardened stack, and why it takes so long. It's tricky to build to build a hard hardened stack for a storage system because you have a number of different things that the storage system is trying to do. So we're trying to deliver performance uh, with caching, for example. Uh, we're trying to deliver different types of functions, so perhaps local replication and remote replication. We're trying to deliver uh, functionality like thin provisioning. All of, uh, we're trying to deliver automated tiering, like uh, our easy tier technology. 
each of these functions has an influence on the others. And so it's very, very important, we believe, to have a strongly layered architecture so that you can keep the different functions separate uh, and so they don't interact with each other. The result of this is that with Sand Volume Controller and with Storewise Family, you can use any of the functions in any combination because our architecture keeps each of the functions separate. So if you want to do replication between a thin provision volume and a non-thin provision volume, you can. If you want to make a copy from a compressed volume to an uncompressed volume for some reason, or the other way around, you can do that. And if you look at a lot of our competitors, you find that because they're less careful about protecting the architecture, because they're less careful about separating the functions, there are restrictions that we don't have with our system. So like, you, you can't use a thin provision volume if you also want to do snapshots or something like that. And those are the sorts of things that make a system harder to use. And we believe that we're serving our customers better when we make a system that's easy to use, when we make it flexible, and so they really don't need to spend a lot of time worrying about how the different bits of technology work together. You're essentially saying your code base is not a hairball, and that some others are. I mean, is that, that's essentially is that what fair? I'm saying. Because <laughs> I was going to ask you, well, don't, don't, you know, because people talk about, oh, it's old, it's you know, old system, it's going to bolt on, blah 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 blah. But you're describing a situation where this is advantageous because it's mature and hardened, but it's designed in a way that is not all clouded and intertwined and constrained. That's exactly right, and I mean, let me give you an example of that, that when IBM acquired the Storewise company, mm. one of the reasons for bringing Storewise, the company, into IBM was to integrate the real-time compression function. We were able to do that very quickly with Sand Volume Controller because of the architecture that we had. We could just plug the Storewise technology in and we got real-time compression. Similarly, I was, I was mentioning the Bridgeworks uh, technology that improves performance for replication. And in the same way, because of our layered architecture, we could just plug the technology in very easily and add to the system and give our customers value much more quickly than we could have done so, otherwise. So you, if I interpret that right, you're saying once you started the project, you were able to integrate it very quickly. But, That's right. But it took some time to get it into the queue, right? Was that just because you have so much stuff in the queue? Was it because the sales guys were maybe afraid as, well, we don't want to, we don't want to cut the price. <laughs> we don't want to sell less storage. It was there some of that going on? There's, you know, when you, when you, that's, that's a very interesting point because you know, when you talk about storage efficiency, whether it's compression, whether it's thin provisioning, whatever it might be, um, there's always a little bit of a tension with salespeople because the immediate reaction is, I'm not going to sell so much storage, so that seems like a really bad idea. Um, but the flip side of that is that whatever it is you are trying to sell, becomes easier to sell because it's now much more appealing uh, to your customers, it's, it's much more price competitive, uh, and so you know, people are going to want to talk to you about that. I mean, everybody wants to find out how you could save cost in IT. Well, plus the market is, we've seen time and time again, the market's elastic. Cut the price, people almost invariably always buy more. That's certainly true, and you know, we're seeing that now that there's more data available that people want to store. Mm. All right, Crystal, thanks very much. Appreciate your Chris, perspective. Chris, great My to pleasure. have you on theCUBE, store-wise. This is theCUBE, live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>